Hello, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Resurrect Autos HQ. So, guys, got a message last night from someone that I sold a Fiesta to, one of the red ones. Do you remember the flood damage red, red Fiesta that I just sold? And we finished off and all done. Got a message last night. Um, she said she's got a major problem with the car. There's steam coming from the bonnet and the engine is really, really hot. Um, so I said, look, turn it off, don't start it, leave it to the morning, bring it to me, and I'll look, look all over it, find out what's going on, um, and then I'll let her know today. So I thought I'd just do a video today on that, because you know it's nice to show you all the good things about what I do, but also, um, every now and then, like this, um, something happens and you know, because it's, 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 it's down to me. I sold the car recently to her, so she's only had it two or three days. So I feel completely responsible for sorting this out. I'm not going to charge her nothing. It's just me. I've got to get it done. Um, but yeah, it's just I just think it's a decent thing to do. Like, and obviously, because of warranty and stuff, it's, it's, it's all covered. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I think I know what it is. I've had a quick look at it. Um, it's on the ramp. Let's get over there. I'll show you what's going on. Hopefully, we can deal with it straight away. I think I can. So, yeah, um, let's get into it. Let's do this. So, guys, here we go. It's back. The Red Fiesta, the flood damage one. Um, with all the, you know, the boot um, water was getting in. We've done all the work on it, completely finished it off. Um, and she's had it two or three days. And this has happened. Um, now, Straight away, I said to her, "Is the is the tank um, uh, is it got coolant in the in the reservoir the, the tank?" And she said, "Yeah, it had." Um, and you could just see it there. It was apparently last night. It was a little bit higher than that, so she is starting to lose it, and it's spitting out somewhere. Um, there's no leaks underneath because I've just drove it in as well. I've had it running for 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 a few minutes. Nothing underneath. There's not, there's not. I thought it might have been. The water rad uh, was leaking. It's not that. Um, and then we go to obviously making sure the auxiliary belt is on because that's connected to the water pump. That's all fine. That's all on. Um, so it's not that side. So then I'm sort of pointing towards thermostat because um, if the thermostat is not opening, it builds pressure um, in the pipe work, like this pipe here. Um, that builds pressure and I can still... I can still, it's quite, it's quite, that pressure is quite a lot. Um, and, it, and it kind of, you can't, normally you can just press, like, squeeze the actual uh, hoses, but this one is so tight, you can just about squeeze it, which is not right, it's not correct. So, I think it's the thermostat, and, um, you know, suspiciously that there's coolant residue on the bottom of that pipe there. Um, and you can't quite see it, but there's there's coolant residue around the actual housing, um, thermostat housing. So, now don't get me wrong, this was absolutely fine. Up to temperature, working fine, getting great heat inside. It, you know, I was squeezing the pipe. So, it's only just, obviously, fouled. But it is a part that, you know, it's a wear and tear part. They are going to foul. They are going to wear out, but it's just that... Um, it's happened so quick, like literally a couple of days. So we've got a brand new one here, thermostat, um, and we're gonna put this in place. I'm gonna have a look at the thermostat housing as well. We're gonna see if that's okay, because sometimes, you know, they sort of, um, they get hot, overheat, and then they shrink the metal uh, surrounds to hold the connection on. So we've got to check that anyway. I can't remember if I'll have to look back on the videos to see if we did anything on that thermostat. I don't think we did. So, yeah, <clears throat> we're going to do that today for her. We're going to swap it all out. We're going to probably remove the headlight. Uh, we've got to take out the um, the alternator, take the belt off. Because once you get that alternator out of the way, there's so much more room to work around that thermostat housing um, and to remove it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> Let's just get set up. Let's get it all stripped out. And let's see 
if this is, you know, my suspicions is correct. The, also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the old one out, the thermostat. I'm going to stick it in some boiling water. Um, and you should be able to see, if you stick a thermostat in boiling water, you should be able to see it open and close. So it should just go open and close in there. You know, that it should open and close that spring. That's what, that's what it's supposed to do. So we're going to put that in some boiling water to see if it don't do it. If it don't do it, then it's definitely, you know, that's the problem. But um, I'm going to switch it out anyway, um, and we'll go from there. So let's do this. I'll set you up. Right, okay, so guys, we're in there. Let me show you thermostat housing. Um, it's just here, uh, and the thermostat is inside there. Now, you can see there's a little bit of obviously coolant residue spitting um, around the engine itself. So, um, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely spitting somewhere. But what happens is, is if that thermostat don't open and, sh and, open and close, it builds pressure in the system. And that's why you can't squeeze that pipe there, the water pipe here. You should be able to just squeeze it. But um, when, it's, when it's not open and closing that thermostat, it builds so much pressure in the system that you can't even squeeze that pipe. And then what happens is, because the pressure is built up so much, it squirts out of any gap or hole or pipe or anything like that. It just makes it, you know, a lot more... Um, yeah, a lot more harder, really, to do. So, we're going to get in now. I'm going to now take it out. Um, we're going to get into the first... Sorry, sorry but this, this pipe is right in the way. So, I'm now going to take these four bolts out. They're only 8 mil, um bolts. There's two on the top, two on the bottom. Uh, but it's just a lot easier now. Now that, that this is... It's giving me no, so much space and so much room to work in there. It's just easier to do it like this way. Um, you can get it from the underneath as well sometimes. But it's just... just yeah, just take it all out and it's job done. So let's now take the housing out and then we'll go from there and I'll show you up the thermostat and then we'll do a quick test to see if it will do it or not. And I'll boil, I'll boil up some water on the kettle and then we'll go from there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a new one in anyway, it don't really matter. But I'm, it's, it'd be nice just to see and do a quick test on it, you know, the old one. So yeah, let's continue. Let's do this.
Right, okay. So, guys, just doing a quick test. Um, this is the one that I pulled out of the car. And it is not opening. It's not opening. This is the new one. I've just pulled out that packet. And as you can see, she's opening. So, it looks like that this thermostat is not working correctly. I don't know if it's new, it looks quite new. I don't know if I've put a new one in, I can't remember now. And like I said, I'd have to check the videos, go back, but this one is definitely not opening. Um, and it's got exactly the same water, it's been exactly the same time. But yet yeah, this one, it's closing back up now, but it, it is open, it's opened up. So I'm gonna fit this one in the car um, and then box it all back up and then we're gonna have a good go um, uh, um, yeah and that should that should do the trick it should be the one um, the, the thermostat was not opening I should, I should, that's what it is just will not open so that's 40 so yeah it happens it's one of them things so now let's go ahead and fit this one in place um box it all back up put it all back together get it up to temperature and then we'll check um to make sure that it's um circulating opening closing all that good stuff so yeah let's crack on let's do this Right, okay, so we are all back together, apart from the headlight. Um, trying to leave it off for now, just so I can check to make sure there's no leaks coming through there or nothing like that. Um, and then basically what we're gonna do is get it up to temperature um, and then just leave it. Starts really well. She was saying that she was having problems with, with it sort of start rough starting and stuff like that, but I think it's got a lot to do with the battery. Um, I've just, I was charging the battery as we was working on the car, um, and it's just, yeah, it turned the key straight away. So I think a lot, a lot to do with that is the battery. Um, but we've just got to now get it up to temperature. You can see that, that the bubbles are starting to come through here. And they sort of push their way out that way. Once I've, you know, start squeezing that pipe, they will start also obviously coming through. Got to fill it up a little bit more. Keep an eye on it, just keep topping it up but I need to get the engine up to temperature, operating temperature, um, to get that thermostat to open and close, do you know what I mean? And get the fan working as well. But um, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, that is gonna be it. I think it is, I think that's what it was. Because I've just done the test 
on the other thermostat and it was not opening. It just was not opening. Um, so it has, to, it has to be that really. So there we go. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we have solved the problem and she can get her car back tonight. So bear with me for now. Um, I'm just going to set you up, just going to let it run, just going to do some checks, keep testing, keep filling, doing that sort of stuff, put the headlight in if I think it's all, all okay. Um, and then, yeah, we will see how this goes. So <laughs> I'll set you up for now. Let's do this. Right, okay, so guys, let me give you an update. Um, the fan wasn't working, wasn't kicking in, but I've managed to get that working now. It seems to sort of just sort of over a certain amount of time, it will it will just kick in. Uh, got up the temperature. I've got some really nice hot air coming from the inside. I just start straight up again, so it's really really good. Um, so like I said really nice really really hot air coming from the inside um and then once you do that put the fan on and then push the air conditioning you need a fan so i know the fan's working the fans kicked in so that's good Coolant is staying at the maximum temperature at the point there as well, so that's good. Um, so yeah, it looks like guys that um, this has kind of, you know, solved the problem all to do with that thermostat. Um, I will just put the wheel on though, take it for a test drive, just double check just to make sure that um, everything's good. Um, yeah, no leaks. So yeah, I'll do that and then I'll come back to you and um, take for a test drive quickly. We'll come back and then I'll um, I'll let you know how it goes. But um, yeah, so far so good. So bear with me, guys. See you in a bit. Right, guys, I am back from the test drive. Um, that went really, really well, actually. So yeah, when I got back. Um, the coolant hasn't actually moved a little at all. It's just coming up above that line there, um, that there. So that's good. Uh, fan is kicking in, kicking out, sort of. So that's working great. Got temperature inside. Um, so yeah, it seems like that you know that thermostat um, and possibly a little bit of um, air leak uh, or air sort of trap um, in the system as well. It's all flush through. It all works fine. Um, there's no leaks, so I think, yeah, I think we've actually solved it for her. Um, and I'm going to actually drop this back to her this afternoon, um, and then she can run me back. Uh, she's, only ran, she's, not, she's only ran a common, she's not far. So, yeah, I'll just drop it off to her. But happy days. Another one sorted and done. Um, yeah, so it was definitely that thermostat. And I just wanted to sort of... Um, you know, I'm getting hot. I'm getting nice hot air. You can, I can squeeze the pipes. That one's red hot as well. So I'm, I know I'm getting circulation because see, there's, 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 if it was hot and cold, then it would have, um, yeah, it mean there's no circulation. But we've got hot and hot on both pipes. And as I said, the fans kicking in, kicking out. So yeah, I think we can, um, I think we can safely say job done on this one. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to get this outside. Um, and then once it gets to a bit of time later, I'm going to drop it off. In the meantime, I'm going to bring in the Ford 
B Max that is back from the paint shop. Um, I'll show you the results on that. Um, and we might even have to do a little bit on that as well. Um, I want to have a look at the braking brakes on that. It seems like they're binding a little bit. Something's not quite right there. So we're going to have a look at that. There you go. There's the fan. Kicks in. And then in a minute, in a second, it'll, it'll just click back off. So that's good really because the thermostat is connected to the fan coolant system temperature temperature sensors and all that sort of stuff so yeah it's doing its job it should be doing that so yeah there we go right let me get this outside i'll bring the b max in we'll have a look around it see the paint job and then we'll just see what we can get done today so let's do this right so here we go i've got the b max in the workshop let's have a look around that um have a look at the paintwork that he's done and then, um, yeah, we're just going to take it back on the ramp and then we'll take it up in the end. Just going to have a look at these brakes on the front. Um, they're just binding a little bit. I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. So, yeah, let's have a look at this paintwork then. Um, and I've got to be honest, it's absolutely spot on. Um, he, he does a really, really good job, my painter. Um, it's very, very slightly different um, shade when it comes to the bumper and the wing. We know that it always happens. Um, it's not that bad. I've got to be honest. It's not that bad. He's got it pretty good. Um, he's done all this as well. Went over the bonnet, went up this pillar. Remember that damage that was here? So that's now all gone, disappeared, um, and took it across into that door as well. You can see. Completely gone. Um, he did say to me, he said, this colour is so hard to get to get right it, it, it you can see that but there it it kind of looks different to the door to the wing but it's not it, it really ain't um it's really strange this color really really strange so yeah obviously we had, we had no paintwork done this side but you can see again the difference look at that difference the back's the same as well um so yeah it's just a you know it is what it is. It's the, I think it's just the colour. He said it's just a, a real um, tough colour to get. But you can see, look at the difference. It's not that bad. In, in different lights, it looks different. Like, so if you look over this way, it actually looks pretty good. Um, but then when you're over this way, it changes it a little bit in the, sun, in the sunlight and the daylight. It's just really strange, this colour. Um, but yeah, anyway, he's done the damaged part on that front corner. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly show you the difference in the panels that, that this color actually makes but um yeah he's he's done so now we can continue um well like i said there's something going on with these wheels on this front on this um this, this when they when, you, when you're braking so i need to get it back on the ramp and have a get it up in the air take the wheels off have a strip down see what's going on and then i'll uh yeah i'll come back to you with what i found so let's keep going let's do this Right, guys, let me just show you what I found. Um, I've got to be honest, these pads are, they're not finished, but they are close. Um, and this car, has it got rear pads and discs as well? Just drums. No, just drums. Um, this car has got, has passed every single MOT and it's never had an advisory. And I just don't want that. <laughs> I just don't want that um, happening to me when it comes to this. We want, when we get this MOT, we want an advisory free MOT. And I think those pads are just uh, a little bit too low for my liking. The other thing as well 
is that I don't know if you can see that on the disc, but it just seems like it's unevenly seems to be um, hitting the, the discs. Very strange. So I think it's related to these pads. So, yeah, we're going to whip these pads out um, and change them over and then um, basically just rebuild it and put it all back together. Um, all the arch liners got to go back in. Anything that needs to be done, um, I'm going to crack on with that. But I have not got time today. We're going to have to come back to this tomorrow um, and we're going to do the, do, the, do the pads, get it all sorted, put it all back together and then we're going to run it in um, for an MOT and find out if, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get an advisory-free MOT on this car tomorrow. So I'm going to leave it there. That's the end of today's video. We've sorted the Fiesta out um, and we've made a start with the BMAX um, and we've pinpointed that, fingers crossed, it's just going to be pads. I think it's just going to be pads. Discs, I'm not sure about in a minute. Um... I'm really not sure. I'll have a look. I'll see what price they what price they are, um, and then we'll we'll. I'm definitely going to do the pads, but it, the, the the discs. I'm not sure because I just think they're they're slightly different as well. So this side you've got no lip. On the other side, we've got a lip. So the the front discs are definitely uneven. I might just get the discs done as well. <clears throat> okay, we're going to come back to this tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there, um, and then we're going to crack on, and I'm going to make a decision tomorrow what we're going to do with this one. Um, but for now, that's it, guys. That's the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop me a comment and give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one. Take care. See you soon.